from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Navoitsky. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Beat the Champ. We are wrapping up our month-long stay at the Tonawanda Bowling Center, and as we always do in our final show uh, of every stop, we have a little fun. And what could be more fun and what could say more about the sport of bowling than moms and dads bowling with sons and daughters? Well, any of these parents could have made our regular show, so we've got a virtual who's who and their protege children, so I'm expecting it to be fun. Yeah, so that's what it's gonna be. We've got four sets of moms, dads, kids. They're gonna bowl against each other. We're gonna crown a champion. We're gonna have a lot of fun with it. It's gonna mean you're gonna have to help us keep track of all the people <laughs> on the lanes, but I know we're gonna have great cheering sections. Joel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're so into the competition here that we always forget that this is a family fun yep. sport. So today will be a great experience for everybody and the crowd too. It is the ultimate family day here on Beat the Champ. We're gonna have a lot of fun at the Tonawanda Bowling Center, so let's get rolling. I'm here with the Bergios, and let's see, how, how old are you, honey? Seven. Are you our youngest competitor out here today? But I hear you throw it really, really good, and we're gonna be surprised, is that true? Uh-huh. <laughs> Did you teach him everything he knows? No, he has spent a lot of time in the living room watching the bowlers on Beat the Champ and, uh, you know, watching the pros, so he's, uh, he's doing great. He, he enjoys it a lot. Well, I think that's how we all started, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an all-star competition because all of you bowlers have bowled against each other before, so I think this will be a lot of fun. But we're looking forward to seeing how you throw it. Mm-hmm. Good luck. <laughs> I'm here with the Raxenbergers. Now, Mom is a superstar in our community, so have you learned anything about bowling from your mom? Uh, yeah, she throws it well. She's good under pressure because she's bowled a lot. Um, well, you couldn't have said that better because I think the same thing of your mom. She's a great bowler. So how long have you been bowling? Uh, this is my first competitive year. Wow, you've already made the TV show. That's fantastic. Well, looks like you're a chip off the old block. Yep. So I want you to bowl really good today and have a good time. Okay, thank you. All right. Match number one, the pair in red. That's Joe and Noah Bergio versus Carrie and Jacob Raxenberger. And a good way to get things started off here. We've seen Carrie on our shows before. And, uh, and Joe is an outstanding bowler as well. And can't wait to get a look at, uh, at this combination of bowlers. And to help us along with uh, our special edition here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center as we watch Noah, Ra or Noah Raxen, I'm sorry, Jacob Raxenberger get a start Started. We welcome in our buddy Mike Zarcone, and Mike, uh, I know you've had a chance to do a little coaching with some of our participants here, but how much fun is this for something like you to be a part of as well also? This is awesome. I, I love to watch these kids ball. This should be really fun. So you saw the first throw for Jacob Raxenberger, and he'll get a shot at throw number two here. And both Jacob and Noah Sue are kind of new bowlers here and starting to learn. And of course, as we get our first look at Noah, uh, Noah Bergio, mm -hmm. he's only seven years old. So he is just getting himself started. And Mike, I know that you've been doing a lot of work with Noah yep, as well. Yeah, we've been doing too. a little work with him on Saturday mornings and uh, he's really come a long way. Look at that. He's got that. <laughs> look at that. He's got that Zarcone back yes, he does. there, doesn't he? <laughs> What a way for Noah to get things started off. What a great little strike. wrist action there, huh? <laughs> yeah, he can. Gets it on he it. winds it up. That is outstanding. What a what a great way to get it going here. And then you get a look at uh, at Mike who will join us for this and provide his expertise. And now here comes Dad, Joe Bergio. I think Noah got more pins than Joe did there on yes, the first he throw. Yes, he did. Huh? That's for sure. Of course, we're uh, we're working the Baker format here, right, Sue? Where we alternate the shots, right. make sure everybody uh, knows where we're going at with that. As we look at Joe and Noah Bergio from the town of Tonawanda. Not to put more pressure on Joe, but he did say that under no circumstances was Noah going to bowl better than him, if that meant pulling the switch on the lights. <laughs> so, pressure. Well, I think Noah got the win number one in the first frame. That's right, we're keeping tabs, and I would agree with you. 
So yeah, so th so that's off to a, off to an excellent start for those. And now we come back and we get a look at Carrie Raxenberger bowling as far uh, as part of her team with Son Jacob. And you and Carrie know each other very well, Sue, don't you? Yep, Carrie's a great bowler. The uh, what they're not used to is how much the lanes actually break down from all that bowling yeah, that's been done on them all day. That's for sure. Yeah, they were hooking a little bit for us this morning. Uh, can't imagine how they are now. All right, Mike, you were uh, you were in our very first match as we taped here uh, the, the day of bowling at the Tonawanda right. Bowling Center. You were in our first match, so give people a little perspective. We've we've had a lot of bowling since then. Yeah, and, ma and mainly right side. I don't think there was what, one left-hander. Two left. Two left-handers. So yeah, the right side of the lane is probably getting a little. Uh, a little burn up a little bit. So our money's on Noah then. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I like you thinking there. And there's a look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. Now there's a handicap at play in this as well too, Sue. Please explain to everybody that Joe and Noah are getting four pins in the advantage in this match. Right. By the handicap system that they use, which was 100% of 450, um, the difference between the handicap that uh, Joe and Noah are getting and Karen Jacob is, is an advantage of four pins to Joe and Noah. So they already, even though they're ahead in the match, have an extra four pins that they, they're getting in handicap. Correct. <clears throat> and here is Jacob. Good spare. Yeah, a nice spare pickup for 11-year-old Jacob Raxenberger of Cheektowaga. He gets the first mark for his team, so yeah. the kids are doing great. <laughs> yep. There you go. See, the, the younger generation off to the better start here so far. <laughs> Boy, you, look at it, Noah. At that ball look looks about as big as oh. he is. If you can't love watching this kid bowl, you, you just shouldn't look, be watching. Look how he much fun he is. Fun. <laughs> he is <laughs> He's already got that zircon body uh, body English down pat already too, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, good try. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Yes, they start with conventional grips. Is he still conventional or is he? Yes. So their hands are still growing and you don't want to do anything to, you know, damage their ligaments or put them too far ahead because if you start stretching them out and, and making them use their fingertips, it's too early for yeah. that. So I think it's with age as well, you know, as they can handle heavier equipment, then you can get a little further into right. it. Right, and I think that's just the issue with Noah right now is he's using an eight pound ball, which is probably a little light for him right now. So he, I think Joe said he was gonna get him a, a 10 pound ball during the summer and. And another good throw by Jacob Raxenberger, and now here we get another chance to look at Noah. All right, so analyze a little bit of, uh, of uh, Noah's motion here first, Mike. Wow, he's He looks like a young Parker Bone. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Do you know who Parker Bone is from New I Jersey? I do. Of, yeah, well, of course I know who New Parker Jersey Bone guy. is. That's right. We fellow uh, Garden Stater there, Parker Bone. One of the all-time greats, right, on the PBA tour. Absolutely. I like the look on Noah's face. That's that gets That's me priceless. right there. Oh. That, is, that is that is determination defined. Close yeah. match, though. Three-pin match. Yeah, and then a little tip there from Dad, and a little a little high five there from the opponents as well, too. Joe and Noah versus Carrie and Jacob here. Match number one at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. And then we'll have our second match, which will feature Lewis and Sal Morial and Mike and Kaylin Weber. And then the winners of those two matches will square off in the title match. There you go. And Good right now, there, Joe. Joe Bergio's in a nice little zone. Very nice. Again, and they've been practicing on a practice pair that hasn't been bowled on the, for the amount of time that this pair is on, so they come on here and it's a real adjustment to try to figure out the lanes. Carrie Raxenberger up now. A frame. Good shot. And a great shot.
I think this is, uh, you know, as we talked about, Sue, this is a great idea for to, for us to have some fun with this fourth show, but a great way to, to, to just show everybody how this is such a wonderful family sport, and it's so much about moms and, and sons and, and dads and daughters and whatever other combinations you want to come up with. What a great shot there. So there you go, strike by mom, strike by son Noah, or Our Jacob Our first Rather. double. And now let's see if Noah can do it as well too. Oh. <laughs> Noah's feet are getting a little yeah, fast. Yeah, that was a little quick, a little quick. A little too excited. We talk about that's okay. about keeping your emotion in check. That's when you get a little excited. Sometimes your feet get away from you. And All that's right, I got you. Timing is is if critical. You, in this if you game. can convince a seven-year-old to keep his emotion in check, <laughs> God love both of you. That a boy. Great Perfect. Spare. Perfect. Great shot. Perfect. It's uh, it's so cool seeing the pride in their faces that they that they did what they're supposed to do. They did what they know they're they're taught to do, and then to see the results from it is pretty cool. I like their little matching outfits too. Yep, yep. It's the first thing I noticed. <laughs> Now, Joe is on a nice little run of strikes here, so see if he can continue it, he can. And Joe has won some titles himself, too. Fifth place in last year's Open Hour Masters, third place in the Open Hour Masters in 2008, and some nice uh, individual accomplishments for Joe as well, too. I'm sure you've bowled plenty of times with Joe, haven't you? Sure you? have. Wow, big wow. shot there. Joe's bowling great right now. So he's going to force Carrie to strike. Yep, get the first one. So let's see what Joe can do here. The Bergio team of Joe and Noah. And don't forget, next week we will bring the traveling road show of Beat the Champ up to Lockport to Alley Brant Lanes. Our uh, qualifying and our competitors are all set. You can check things out on the Facebook page to see exactly who's going to start bowling next week. And don't forget, uh, qualifying uh, for our next event will be, dates will be announced soon, and the top qualifier at every stop here on Beat the Champ wins that $500 value Dirt Cheap TV from our friends at Dirt Cheap TV. That's the prize for the top qualifier, and then, but you still gotta turn that around into making the show. You, can, you have you won a TV yet? No, I no, have you not. keep making the shows, you just haven't won the TVs yet. Yep. So Carrie Raxenberger finishing things out here in the 10th frame. 168 is the score on the board for Joe and Noah Bergio. Carrie need to strike on that shot, so Joe and Noah are going to uh, move on. Yep. So the Bergios will get a chance to bowl in our championship game. And a nice performance by Carrie and Jacob Raxenberger as well. Final score, we await for the one more throw. And then we've got our next match with the Morials versus the Webbers. So it's Joe and Noah Bergio winning 168 to 160 over Harry and Jacob Raxenberger. And we will talk to our participants when Sue and I come back. Mike's going to stick around. we got another match to come. We're having some fun here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center on Beat the Champ. Well, Jacob and Carrie Raxenberger narrowly defeated by the Bergios. You've only been bowling for about a year or so now, Jacob. What made you decide that you wanted to do this? And tell me how you feel like your game's progressing. Um, my mom inspired me to bowl, and this is only once again my first year competitive bowling. So how did it feel to be all of a sudden your first year bowling on TV like this? 
surprising, <laughs> nerve wracking. <laughs> Guess what? I think your mom is going to say the same thing, aren't you? Uh, yes. Uh, when you're bowling with your child, I think it's a little bit nor more nerve wracking, especially when he strikes and you know the pressure's on you. <laughs> um, how proud are you that he's I decided to take so, up the sport that you love so much? So proud. Um, it's it's been a long time for him to get into bowling. Um, once he started, now that he's bowling competitive, he's got the love in his heart, and that's all you can wish for. All right. Well, you couldn't <laughs> ask for a better mom and son combination. The Raxenbergers doing themselves proud here on Beat the Champ. Second match of our day is coming up next. I'm here with the Morales. They're here to take on our defending champions, the Webbers. So is this your first time on television? Uh, yes. Are you nervous? No. That's good, because there's nothing to be nervous about. How about you, Dad? Yeah, this is the first time. Are you nervous? Nope. All right, well, perfect. Well, you guys are going to be great competitors, because you're not only going to concentrate on your bowling. So I wish you luck today. Thank you. All right. I'm here with our defending champions from last year's competition. And uh, you're here to defend your title. Great job making the show again. Are you excited? Yeah. You had a lot of practice now before more than anybody else has. So, you know, you got your work cut out for you today. So what's your strategy? Just to try my hardest like I did last time. Dad, what's your job out there? Well, I'm going to try to follow her and bowl as well as I can also. Hopefully we can uh, defend our title. Yeah, this is like an all-star setup out here because all you people bowl against each other before. So it's going to be an interesting match. Great bowling with the protégés. So good luck today. Thank you. So we are ready to get started with match number two, and you got to look at our competitors in the in the gray shirts. It's the Morials, Lewis and Sal, and their opponents, Mike and Kalen Weber. Winner of this match will take on the Bergios for our championship, and we will get things started with Sal Morial from Niagara Falls, 13 years old. And Sue, the Morials have a significant handicap advantage in this one, so uh, give fill everybody in on that, how it's going to affect the scoring. Well, because they're at different levels of their um, and of their advancement in the game, they kind of even the score a little bit by giving some handicap. And in this case, Sal and Lewis are getting 30 extra pins, so they're going to start with 30 before they even throw a ball. Well, good shot. And a good follow-up by Sal Morial. And a good start for him. And now we get our first look at Kalen Weber, 11 years old from Tonawanda. A nice 147 average. She's been bowling pretty well. Oh, pretty good looking there, Mr. Zarcone, wasn't it? Absolutely. Again, they're contending with uh, kind of dry conditions, and when you don't throw it when you're young and you don't throw it super hard, it's hard to keep that ball from hooking to the left-hand mm -hmm. side. So is there an adjustment that you, that even as a youngster like that, that you would want to try to make, knowing that you're not going to kind of have the kind of ball speed that, that will fight its way through that? Well, they're going to use plastic balls, but even with that, the ball speed right. doesn't really help. All you can do is try to move them in as deep as they feel comfortable because the oil is still inside by the by the third arrow. Mm -hmm. Nice shot by Mike there, though. And now we get our first look at Louis Morial, also, of course, from Niagara Falls, works at the Seneca Niagara Casino, 40 years old. Somewhat of a new bowler, only about 15, 16 years as a bowler is Louis. Boy, he's got some power and some speed there, doesn't he? Was that Tyler? I'm sorry. I was going to say, I yeah. Couldn't see. yeah. <laughs> Very impressive. What ages were you two guys? Not necessarily when you got started bowling, but what was the point when bowling sort of became more than just something that you did and something that you wanted to do or maybe something that you knew you were good at? For me, it was probably my early 20s. Me too. So you were late to the game a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was too. late to early the game. 20s. Both of you guys. So you guys nece did, didn't necessarily bowl with the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old age, or, or did it take you that long to realize how much you enjoyed it? Yeah, I, I did bowl when I was a junior bowler, but yeah, it's by the time I got to my early 20s, I 
I started the adult leagues, and that's where it took off from Yeah, there. I would say the same thing. We well, both junior leagues, that's where our parents put us, but um, I didn't get this, you know, where you're at this level early, and you bowl on TV, and you got the opportunity. Right. You know, my parents didn't bowl like their parents bowl competitively to bring you along that quickly. So I think if you didn't have that, we kind of fell upon it on our own and just met people and right. that exactly. helped us along. Yeah, Who was nice one of job your, by Kaylin Weber. Very good. Who was one of your, um, I don't know, mentors? Like for me, look up to? Frank Colburn was a uh, was really was really huge for me. So, but he didn't bowl, so he would have to have picked you out. As he someone did, to... especially in high school, because he was uh, Kathy Colburn was our coach, and he right. was at all our practices, and he was just a, a great inspiration for me taught me a lot of things. How about for you? I know we've talked about this a little bit before, but who was that person Roy for you? Roy Summer. Okay. Who was your coach at Buff State? He was right? my coach at Buff State. Um, these people see something in you that you don't really see yourself, and they, and, and, you, and you admire them and the way they carry themselves, that you don't want to let them down. So you want to be what they see in you, and it really translates, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Same thing. So you guys are interesting, I think, to some degree in that, you know, your parents were, were bowlers, but maybe not not competitive crazy bowlers, bowlers right. competitive bowlers, where, you know, where we see a lot of the, the kids are coming up because their parents are, are really good bowlers. So so some it, that it's interesting to me that, you know, maybe your influences and a lot of other kids' influences may come from other places other than their parents being competitive bowlers. But if that's probably true in, in most sports. I mean, we're there's always a mentor involved. If it's not your parent, then there's going to be someone that influenced you. Right. And well, for me, it was like watching the PBA on Saturdays, watching Mark Roth. Mark, Mark Roth, Roth was a uh, was a was a huge. I wanted to, I wanted to be just like Mark. No kidding. And yep. for me, it was Brian Voss. <laughs> Oh, imagine my, my, that. My mother was in love with Brian Voss. What <laughs> <laughs> girl wasn't in love yeah. with Brian Voss? No, fundamentally perfect, though. Yeah, His game was still fundamentally today. perfect. So as we watch, uh, I want us to all watch Sal throw here uh, in the fifth frame, but then I've got the, the, the appropriate follow-up question for both of you guys. Oh. And, and that is, you guys have reached very high levels of bowling in your profession, so I would assume you have crossed paths with some of these people. So what was it like for you to maybe get a chance to meet Mark Roth or bowl with him or against him for the first time? In, in fact, I think one of my first PBA events was in Mark Roth's actual event, the Plastic Ball Tournament, when it was here at Thruway Lane. Right, right, right. And uh, we got to meet and bowl with him, so it was uh, it was absolutely fantastic. We're going to be back with more Beat the Champ bowling action in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. Uh, yeah, it's a different it's a different world now. You know, it is. It, it you know, and kids have a lot of other things that are pulling at their time, and and uh, it, you know, but I and I also think the athletic world, like you said, has changed. That you know, everybody, every parent thinks their kid's going to be the next great one, and they feel like they've got to get them started right away, and they've got to be personal trainers and personal instructors, and you know, and 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 analysts, you know, and, and analyzers and everything like that. And that's just it's the world we live in. I, I get it. I understand understand it and maybe really all it takes is just like what you guys did which is just going out and practicing well, and the, learning from your mistakes and you know what Absolutely. I think the young people today do practice still the ones that you hear uh, Ryan Reese you know who's come to such a high level and, and mm -hmm. as a senior he practices I mean so even Michael's son Mike is he's a tremendous bowler too does he practice a lot yes he does so it's still this, that has not changed. You good. still have to get out there and Well, that's good to hear. Lewis uh, Morial in the eighth frame here. It's the Morials versus the Webbers. Lewis is on a nice little run here. And he'll slap hands and turn it over to Sun Sal. Close game. And here we are. It's a tight game going down to the end here. Uh, the Morials with a whole bunch of people here cheering them on at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. And another nice throw there from Sal. 
Don't forget, check us out on the Facebook page for Beat the Champ. You'll get all the details on next week's shows and uh, qualifying for our events beyond that. And don't forget, you can be a part of this show. Sign up for qualifying. All the details will be on the Facebook page. And remember, our top qualifier wins that dirt cheap TV. And of course, as Sue always rightly points out, always a spot reserved in the top 24 for our number one scoring female bowler. And we're still waiting for that to happen to get one of the ladies on hey, the show. We've thrown a lot of obstacles at these guys as far as lining up, lefties, righties, hooking, all kinds of conditions, 300s, but I've, they've yet to have to take on a girl, and I want to see that. <laughs> Actually, I thought this month we might, because Peggy Kuhn, uh, she qualified it for the women's spot, and she bowled pretty well in the top 24. She just missed out. Well, I look forward to that day. I, you know, I keep wanting to see you try to qualify, and we'll mic you up, and you can do this exact job that you do now while you're bowling. I think that would be a lot of fun. What do you think, Mike? That Are we be, good? That would be Mike, very I'm interesting. sure we'll volunteer to sit in for you here <laughs> while you're bowling. If I make this show, I guarantee whoever I bowl against is going to slap a shot at me, at me because I've said it so many times. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that is a good point. You, you, you will have to, uh, you know, they may go back and watch some DVR uh, and YouTube versions of the show. I've told all my secrets on this show. That's right. See, that's it. You're you're learning. Once you're on TV, you can't hide. And you know, it, it 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 used to be back in the day when I got into this business about 30 years ago that once you said it, it was off in outer space and nobody really remembered it. And there weren't everything wasn't recorded. Well, now our shows for Beat the Champ wind up on YouTube about two weeks after they air. So yep. there is no escaping it. Nope. You know, I mean, you know, when Mike prepares for the show, he goes back and watches the old YouTubes because he doesn't want to repeat ah. wearing the same T-shirt right. twice in a row. So, right. right, you know, I know you check things like that. <laughs> hey, I have a, a, a salesman friend who will every Sunday or or every other Sunday or so send me a random quote that I said. It'll just come through on my text message. <laughs> It'll be something, some partial sentence that I said. So, Steve, you know who you are. <laughs> Send me that one. <laughs> All right, we're heading down the stretch here. And uh, there's a nice throw by our guy, Louis Morial. Where are we at with the score of this one with the handicap, Sue? Uh, Mike and Kaylin are moving on to yep. defend their title. They've got the 202 on the board, and they are going to move on. That's right, defending their title because we've done this before. So, so it's going to be the Webers and the Bergios in our championship match. Good shot. And the Morials are doing a nice job here and coming up strong and finishing strong. We've had a wonderful four month or four week stay here for this month at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. Second time we have been here. We were here in 2016. And we hope that this is always gonna be a regular stop for Beat the Champ. We've had a lot of fun here. 202 to 191. It's the Webbers of Mike and Kalen defeating the Morials. Lewis and Sal will talk to the Morials and get you ready for our championship match when the three of us return to the Tonawanda Bowling Center. Beat the Champ comes your way right after this. Well, a narrow defeat for the Morials in this match, but a good performance by both of you guys. Sal, what is it about bowling that you enjoy so much? Um, learning from my dad, and he's given me everything that I've had. Yeah, how much do you guys bowl together, Lewis? How much has it become sort of a father and son uh, outing for you guys? It's been more and more now. Um, we started through the summer and stuff. And we're get in a few more other adult youth leagues and stuff. So. Right, good. How was, uh, how was being on TV? How, how'd you feel? It was great. Yeah, Sal, oh, yeah. you liked it? Yeah. All right, we're going to get you back for one of these things sooner or later, right? Oh, yeah. All right, the Morial's doing a nice job here. We got our championship match of the adult child uh, title here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. It is coming up next. It's 
it's our championship match of the family showdown. Boy, look at Noah Burjo. Is he ready to go or what? He's he's too busy mugging for the camera. We got a bowl <laughs> here, Noah. We got bowling to do. So it's Noah and Joe Burgio and Mike and Kaylin Weber for our championship match. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been great to see the moms and the sons and the dads and the daughters bowling with each other. And it's been great to see, again, the next generation of outstanding Western New York bowlers, including this young lady as Kaylin Weber gets us started and almost wow. got a great strike. Wow, that was a great shot. 11 years old is Kaylin Weber from Tonawanda and very impressive performance so far here today. And she'll try to grab this spare. Good shot. Oh, just wow. like Mike Zarcone does yeah. it. Start on the right, finish on the left, grab the pins, what you need, good job. All right, so now it is seven-year-old Noah Bergio, and as you saw at the beginning of the show, you just gotta watch his face. That'll tell you everything you need to know. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. That wasn't good. How did you leave that? That's with the light ball, the eight pound ball, the oh. deflections. Mike Zarcone is with us as he's been with us here for uh, for the first two matches of the show. And Mike spends a lot of time working with Noah and teaching him the finer points of bowling. And I think your teaching is already paying off because uh, we see a future star in the making here. But you got a little work to do on this one. Come on. Oh, yeah, good not try. Not bad. Not bad. What, when, when something when, when you leave something like that, Mike, what do, what do you tell a youngster about? What's the strategy when you've got three, four, five pins spread out like that? Just go for the big cluster and get okay. as many pins as you can. Yep. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. That's what we say to the big people, too. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Get as many pins as you can. Well, speaking of that, Joe Bergio had a nice performance in the first match and knocking a lot of pins down. We were discussing earlier in the show the philosophy behind pins on a double you know if you leave a split big four you know on a double yep. do you try to make it or do you go for the pin uh, it depends what it is like a four six you just go for the pin you know the two four eight ten i usually try to go for it because I, I think I can make it sometimes. Because on a double, those count as... Uh, yeah, it's double the pins. Double the pins. So a spare for the Bergio clan. <laughs> in frame number two, and now we get our first look at Mike Weber from Tonawanda. Mortgage underwriter is the profession for the 40-year-old and excited to be bowling with daughter Kayla. Now, if you'll remember, a year ago, when we were here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center, we did a Father's Day special, and who won it? But the Weber family. So they're looking to defend their family title here. Well, he, Mike actually got to bowl twice, so they kind of had a disadvantage because they were right. half of the competition, but they still won. That's right. Uh, and we should mention, Sue, what, uh, what we're dealing with on a handicap front here in this match. Right, the way the handicap worked out, Noah and Joe will be getting 18 pins. So right now, this is an eight pin match. Uh, Noah and Joe are up eight pins. Got it. So as you look at the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard, the handicap already worked into the score. Correct. Great wow. shot. Yeah, great wow. shot for Kaylin Weber. We, we made Janelle do added math here today to uh, <laughs> account for the handicap, but she, she can handle it. We know that. All right, good stroke, good form by Noah. Oh. And there you go, there's one of those dreaded splits. Never too early to start working on those, right, Mike? No. <laughs> Just okay, get so the, I think get the my, pin and move on. my strategy for Noah would be to whatever his thought process was for that last spare, to use that for his first ball. Correct. Yeah, Noah's mad. He's mad at himself. 
guess that's something else when you think about the coaching aspect of it, Mike. You know, you want him to be disappointed that he didn't throw it the way he wanted to. But, but I guess a, there's a line where you say, hey, it's okay. He's a good listener, though. He, If you tell him to do something, he usually... He, he, he's pretty good at doing it, so mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's a good listener. But you don't want the kids getting down too much, right, when things don't go their way. You don't want them to lose their interest and lose their edge, so yeah. you have to walk a fine line as a coach to uh, make sure they know, hey, you should have done it this way, you need to do it that way, but but don't don't get too worked up about right. it. Right, he's young, he got a long way, long, long life ahead of him, long career ahead of him. Mike, you're as involved in this, and both of you guys are as anything else. And you know what? I think there probably you would tell me from a bowling proprietor's perspective, there was a little concern about the next generation. How do we continue the sport and maintain the interest level for the next generation of bowlers that have so many other things going on in their lives? How much, what sense do you get in your experiences around Western New York that, that, there, that there is a younger generation and a next generation of Mike Zarcones and Sue Novoisky? Oh, just just here on Saturday mornings, the the house is, from one end to the other is full with all the you know the junior bowlers. So it's 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 it's, it's really nice to see. I don't think the sport's in any danger of losing its its crop going forward. I really don't. Well, they even actually have two shifts here. They have a morning shift and an, an afternoon shift. So they're they're pretty full here on a Saturday morning. How, how much does that extend beyond our area, which we know is is, is a core bowling part yeah, of the country? Every, every center has a junior bowling program. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think there's plenty of kids out there. I think, uh, actually, I know this for a fact, that junior gold is at its all-time highest. Mm -hmm. So the kids coming out to compete in junior gold, uh, which great means shot. an expensive amount of traveling for the parents. They gather up the whole family, and they go to whatever site it's at. It's in a different state every year. Um, and they have record numbers now in 2017. So bowling's fine. Good. Well, that's good to hear. You know, and I don't know how how much people may a few years ago may have been worried that it wouldn't be fine or not, and and maybe that's part of being proactive as great as shot. a as a sport too. Boy, two great shots from Noah there. Yep. He had it. He was right on the head pin on that first throw, and then he finished the spare like he needed to. Look look how proud you are over there. <laughs> he's he's a great kid. You know, and bowling's done a good job of evolving too, because bowling has it become more of a a corporate, build, a corporate building party, birthday party, adult party. They've changed with that with better food, not just snack bar food. Right. And I think that all the bowling centers have, have kind of gone to that. It's kind of a, a resounding thing with us from, from month to month. Every bowling center is, you know, can, can speak of having a restaurant, not just a snack bar. Right. And so they've kept up that way or they've made themselves more competitive that way. And, um, you know, for the juniors, proprietors understand the value of juniors and they keep it interesting for them. Right. So bowling's evolved just like everything else, but they've stayed relevant. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. It would change his wrist action a little bit. He wouldn't be able to really get into it as much as he is now. Holds back on his ability to spin it so much. Right. And is that really what adding weight does to it? Is it tries to keep things lined up a little bit better? Well, yes and no. It, all, it, would, it also help pin carry. Mm -hmm. It won't deflect as much. Gotcha. Yeah, because the ball's bouncing off the pins itself. Mm -hmm. You know, the ball's not driving. It's actually bouncing off of the pins. So it's leaving sure. weird, unmakeable things. It's like a physics equation in there somewhere, <laughs> but that wasn't my strength in school, so I won't even uh, force and mass and acceleration and all that stuff, right? That's a lot of physics in bowling. Yes, there is. Well, how much have we over the last couple of weeks spent talking about ball speed because we have the benefit of the of the speed charts here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. We spent a lot of time talking about what it means, what it doesn't mean, uh, what it can tell you about the way someone is bowling. I, you know, it's a it's something neat for me to be able to look at and say and ask you, well, what what does an 18 or a 20 mile an hour ball mean to a bowler? Well, you're also dealing the ball isn't standard either. It's not like they're all using the same bowling ball. There's all there's different formations inside the balls. There's different cores inside of them. 
them. They, they deal with mass bias now, and, and it's not even just top weight and side weight like it used to be in the day. Now there's pins, and the pins tell them where the mass bias is. I mean, it's just to be a, a ball driller, practically. You almost a, have to be a scientist. To, it's true. Another reason for the kids to stay in school, right? Yeah. Get get those good get that good education. There's there's a look at our Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. The Bergios and the Webers battling their way out here for our family championship at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. Back to Kaylin Weber. Spare. Looking for the spare. Got it. Well, she's been absolutely amazing. She's been clean amazing. the whole game. Oh, she's filled all five frames. All right, here comes Noah. Last chance for him. There you go, that's there better. Go. Looks good. All right. Oh, that 10 pin just wouldn't wouldn't go down. Well, that's his la that's his last shot on this lane, so that was the way he'd want to finish up with a really really good shot. Hopefully he can make the spare. So what might, it, when Noah walks up to you after this match, Mike, and says, what should I have done better? What do I need to work on? What's going to be your uh, answer? All you have to do is just have fun. That's all. Right. OK. <laughs> Nothing and jumps out at you. Spare. You're right. Uh, don't, he, don't overthink was, it. No, nah, he was great. He was great. Good job. Way to go, Noah. Good job. All right, let's see if uh, if Dad Joe can uh, finish things off successfully for the Burgios. Uh, nothing like uh, nothing like leaving with a little challenge there, huh? <laughs> little double pinochle action. I knew that I knew one of you were going to come up with what what the nickname for that thing is. Yeah, that's the old double pinochle. Double the pinochle. double pinochle. We might not have said that one before. I don't know that we have. That no. sound, shockingly enough, that sounds like a new one in a year and a half. <laughs> one forty-eight is the score posted by the Bergios. So and now, Kaylin Mike, we and Mike the are defending champions. Going to defend their title again. There you go. Kaylin and Mike will remain. At our winners. And you know what? All, it, it, all that said, this was a lot of fun. We got to see some great young bowlers. Those guys and gals got a chance to bowl a little on TV, which is fun. Uh, got a chance to enjoy the spotlight, and that's the most important thing about, about this family championship here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. It was a lot of fun seeing them. I can't wait to, uh, to, to see uh, Noah and Kaylin and, and Sal and Jacob bowl again down the road and see how much better they have gotten from this. Yeah, the way Mike's bowl, we might be seeing him on uh, some future editions of Beat the Champ. So this was a lot of fun. I'm glad uh, we were able to do this. This is always always an, an, uh, a nice way to wrap things up here. Mike, thank you as always for being a part of this. And uh, I can almost guarantee we know we're going to see you uh, coming up next week, couple of weeks over at Alley Brandt, because I know you're bowling well right now. Thanks for being a part of this. Always good to catch up with you. Thank you. Appreciate you it. You got it. Mike Zarcone. So we got our final score here, 203 to 148. The Webbers defend their title. We'll talk to them and the Bergios when Sue and I come back to the the Tonawana Bowling Center right after this. Well, it's the Webbers defending their championship against the Burgios, but regardless of any of that, we saw some great bowling, and I know everybody had some fun. Noah, the best part about all this was watching the look on your face. We didn't even need to see the pins to know exactly how things went. Is that just, you just get caught up in the moment a little bit? Yep. Yep, <laughs> yeah. What is it that you like so much about bowling? 
it's a, it's a lot of stuff. I, 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 I don't even know. <laughs> All right, Dad, well, what do you think it is that he likes so much? He's, I think it's just the, the challenge of the game, and um, he's, I don't know, I'll say the same thing he is. I, I don't know. He's, he just does such a good job with it. How proud, are, how proud are you to know that he's kind of taken up the sport that you love so much as well, too? Oh, it's just, it's really beyond words. He, he's so, so proud of him today. He did so well. And, um, you know, I just thank everybody for uh, all the family and friends that came out here to watch, just, you know, just basically to watch him. They don't care about me. They just, they, they're just, they're just here for him. So. Did you hear that, Noah? Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. So maybe, we'll have, right. maybe we'll have to, maybe we'll have to try the show again by myself. Well, so. there he'll you be go. In the, he'll be watching. Yeah, I know he will. We might be able to get him on as a guest color commentator. Right? If he can get that on there, Sue. All right, well, beautiful job, young lady. In the final match, you were clean. You made all of your spares or strikes. You know how amazing that is that you did that? Congratulations. And did you have fun out there? Yeah, it was really fun. Do you work on your spares when you practice? Do you work hard on your spares? Yeah, sometimes I do. Okay, well, it looks like you did because it showed. How, are, how proud are you today? Oh, I'm extremely proud. She bowled absolutely amazing. Obviously, out bowled me. I had an open that last game. So after the third frame or the fourth when I had the open, it was a little nerve-wracking trying to come back to keep up with her. But I'm great here to be have the opportunity just to defend the title and just be back again. It's just unbelievable. Well, congratulations. Two years in a row, you two. So great job. Thank you. All right. Another great family championship here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center. Congratulations to the Webbers, to the Burgios, to the Morials, and the Raxenbergers. We had great bowling all day long. Sue and I will come back and wrap up this week's edition of Beat the Champ when we return to Tonawanda right after this. Well, another great month here at the Tonawanda Bowling Center from our big shot bowlers that gave us some unexpected results to our family and our little bowlers that really were fun to watch. Oh my God, what a great month we had. It was so much fun watching everybody bowl. And you're right, that show was really cool and it's good for the future of the sport to see these young people as good as they are. Yeah, and Janelle, I know you had fun watching Noah and Kaylin and Jacob and, and Sal and those guys bowl. Really, it just shows what's to come in the coming years and what great things they're going to do with bowling. Yeah, well, what's to come for us is a shift up to Lockport because we'll join you from Alley Brant Lanes to start a month-long stay there. That'll be next week. Our defending champion from here in Tonawanda, David Tokaz, will defend his title against a whole new crop of bowlers. We can't wait to bring it to you as Beat the Champ rolls on to Lockport. We will see you next week.